Now, from the looks of it, it seems as though you drew this character in a Kulin style, and that's perhaps why it looks like you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> If your character's lips don't look juicy and kissable, what's the point of drawing them at all? Sorry guys, I will... Alright, what's up guys? So recently I put up a hashtag, SamRoastMe16, where you guys submit your work for them to be destroyed publicly on YouTube. So in our last video, we ended some careers, but in today's video, I wanna fix some of your guys' work. And hopefully together, we can set the children on the right path so that you guys can create less of these abominations and make more work that'll make your mother proud. And this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Let's jump right into it. We're gonna find our first victim here. So let's take a look here and know this piece is not by Picasso. This is by Jam X Y Joe C. And the caption is, okay, I give up, guys. Never give up. And just to preface this video, the pieces that I'm gonna be showing you guys are by no means the worst pieces in this entire roast. There are simply pieces that we can make some small changes to that'll make a big difference. And these are the best ones for the education of the children. So buckle up and get ready for this wild ride. Make art beautiful again. So just like how we would approach any other problem, the first thing that you have to do is use your brain. Now we're going to use our tiny brains to try to understand what exactly has gone wrong here. And something has gone horribly wrong. A couple of key things. Number one is the eye line. The two eyes do not sit on the same line. In a normal person, what we're going to get is the inner corners of each eye should be sitting on the same eye line, which goes perpendicular to the center line of the face. For the really tiny baby brains in the back, perpendicular means there's a 90 degree angle between the two lines. So naturally, the first fix we're going to do on this piece is we're going to use our liquify tool. Liquify is always great for making big changes without destroying the rendering that you've already laid down. There we go. Check that out. Now we're going to undo, redo, undo, redo. Check out the difference in that. Okay. Picasso, normal. Dropped as a baby, normal. Had her head caught in the elevator doors, normal. Very simple fix right there for the eyes. Now I'm going to use the liquify tool to make some other adjustments to the shape of the face just to create a bit more flow in the overall silhouette and something else that we got to point out is look at the mouth this mouth is a front view but the face is not her face is in a three-quarters view so the mouth should not be a front view unless she's walking around looking like this so how do we fix this liquify so i'm going to just move the upper lip over a bit shrink this side of the lips so that it comes back in more because that's what's going to give you a sense of perspective. And because I have trouble focusing on a single thing for too long, I'm going to go on to the nose too, because it's looking a little bit like Squidward right now. And we don't want that. Now, usually you don't want to draw your noses like this. This looks like a butt. I would try to think of the nose as a triangle, something that's a little bit more three dimensional. Now take a look at this. Okay. This line that you see right here, this not necessary. We don't need that at all. So I'm going to take the skin color and just boom, that's gone. No more. And we're going to give her a bit more of a jawline. We're going to give her some shading here. Now, from the looks of it, it seems as though you drew this character in a Kulin style. And that's perhaps why it looks like you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> so what I've done here is I've flipped the canvas horizontally just to be able to spot any other mistakes that might be in this painting. And uh, oh my goodness, the hand. I, I'm, I'm going to just run from my responsibilities and just take this out. We don't need that. And let's give her a nose hole. All right, there we go. It's going, it's going pretty well so far. Check this out. Check this out. Oh my, oh, yeah. Oh boy, that's crazy. So we're going to just flip the canvas back around here. And now we're going to do some more work on the eyes. Usually when you have eyes in a three quarters view, as you can see here, the outside of this eye becomes a bit more rounded looking again because of perspective, whereas this eye still looks pointy. So we're going to just take this point and make it a little bit more round. Let's give her some more color in the face so she doesn't look like a Kulin drawing and always shade your ears, okay? Even if you don't know what it looks like, shade your ears, wing it. Look at that. Now let's come back in here, darken her eyebrows, make these shapes a little bit more confident. Oh, that's, that's, that's a bit too dark. Ooh. Now we're gonna come down here, give her some line art. And honestly, I don't know if we yassified her enough, so we're gonna merge this down and use the liquify again, just to make her a little bit more yassified. Okay, you guys know why it doesn't look as good as it could right now? It's because of the lips. We haven't gone to the lips. The lips need to be juicy. I'm gonna make these colors a bit more vibrant, again, just to be anti cooling And we're gonna just get our little airbrush and give her corners some depth, just like that. And last but not least, highlights. So let's get one in the eyeball right there, one 
right there and on the nose on the lips oh yeah oh yeah and i'm coming back in here with a little bit more liquefied just to make sure the character is maximum yassified there we go that looks pretty good now let's take a look at the before Ooh. Okay, so some things here were obviously off, especially in terms of perspective and where the features are placed on the face. But you see, as soon as you're able to address that and stop making her nose look like a butt, what you're gonna get is a much more pleasant looking character. So we go before, after, before, after, before, after. Consider that fixed. Okay, so our second victim here is Zoom Raby. We've got a bit of a situation here. The character is being lit from the side, but it looks as though her entire face is washed out in a golden color. Generally, this is not how we want to apply lighting. We don't want to just take an airbrush, brush one side, and call it a day. That is lazy. That is us running away from our responsibilities. And what do we do here? We don't run away from our responsibilities. So the main thing we're going to focus on is the lighting. But before we can actually do that, I need to liquefy her face. If we flip this canvas, flip horizontal, look at the mistakes here, okay? Like one side is so much bigger, but no more. Today we fix her. Now, some of these areas we might have to do a little bit more than just liquefy because some of these mistakes are beyond the saving of my liquefy tool. So at this stage, I think we can go in with a brush and uh, actually make some manual changes to the rendering on this character. Now, the most important thing is the eyes. This is the first thing we want to target because this tends to be the first thing that people look at when they see a drawing. So check this out, before, after, before, after. Now the eyes are starting to grab your attention and that's what we want. So I'm gonna merge this layer down and then we're going to address the lighting situation here. Now because there's a strong orange light coming from this side, we have to assume that the face will be lit in the same manner. What I'm seeing right here is a lack of lighting. Now when our golden light is coming from the side, we have to assume that there's going to be golden light hitting this side of the face and golden light hitting the side plane of the cheek. And I'm just going to set this layer to a hard light mode to give it some more saturation, but you can see the difference immediately. Here's without the light. Here is with the light. There's so much more three-dimensionality to the features on the face. Guys, always keep in mind how the three-dimensional forms on your character affects the way you render them. Because if you don't, they're gonna look flat. There's gonna be no peaks, no valleys. It's just gonna be flat, like the trajectory of your career. Now, if there's a warm light source, I like to make the other side a little bit cooler, just to give it a bit more balance in terms of the color harmony in the overall piece. Now, having done this, let's once again give your characters a little bit more saturation Duration. Why are we all painting like Huleen? Please guys, use your colors. I'm gonna mess around and get myself into another war. <laughs> and here's something else that I wanna point out. You guys see these lines? It's a lot of going back and forth and that's not something that we wanna keep in our final rendering. So we wanna reduce our kind of chicken scratching lines and we wanna make it as simple as we can. Always look for the path of least resistance. Always do as little as possible to accomplish your goals. Work smart, not hard. Check that out. I am removing these hesitant lines because I want clarity, I want simplicity. And of course, nostrils. You don't have to define the nostrils, but I like to do this because it kind of sets an anchor point for the darkness of the shadow under the nose. And your character's gotta breathe, please. And while we're at that, here's a bit of a process shot. You can see here is the original versus the edit original edit so there's a lot of things that we managed to fix now we're just going to use an airbrush to apply a bit of shadow into the lips again making the mouth look juicy if your character's lips don't look juicy and kissable what's the point of drawing them at all sorry guys i will so we're going to come in here get some more detail on the eyelids just like that and i think we can start to apply a highlight color now the highlight on the eyes is going to reflect the lighting in the environment so if there is an orange light coming from the left side of the character then we are going to have a highlight on the left side of the eyeball that reflects that color. All right, so there is our fixed piece and it's almost like I've drawn an entirely new portrait. That's the original, that's the new one. Original, new one. Yeah, that's crazy. So the main thing that I wanted to go after for this one was the imbalance of the two sides of the face. Now, when you draw a center line down the face, you generally wanna make sure that both sides are somewhat symmetrical. And the second thing is the lighting. We wanna avoid brushing a general light hue on an entire side. Instead, we wanna follow the way the light would interact 
with the form of the face. So taking into consideration the structure of the head and the structure of the planes of the face, we get that. So that was victim number two. I'm hoping you guys are really learning from this process of examining the issues that are present in these portraits and targeting them, fixing them, making them beautiful, juicy, and yassified and desirable. Okay, so here we've got our third victim positive lines. Look, man, I don't know about your name because nothing about this portrait is positive. All jokes aside though, this is a solid portrait with some very good rendering, but something still need to be addressed. So this one's more of a profile view. Now, when you look at a person from a profile view, you're going to see more of their nose, more of that curvature of the nose ridge, and you're going to see less of the eye on the far side of the face. The two eyes sit on the front of the face in the front plane, in these two sockets. You see these? And when you look at me from this angle, what do you see? You see a big nose. So we're gonna take this nose ridge, we're gonna bring it out more. Okay, so look what's happening here. This is what I've done. That is the original. I've raised the nose out a bit more. Now it doesn't look like the middle of her face is concave and she looks yassified. That's the most important of all. Now you see this far eyeball, there is a problem here. The problem is the eyelashes end right there. We don't want the eyelashes to end right there because they wrap around to the corner of the eye. So we wanna kind of extend this down, right? Give it the illusion that it's wrapping around the shape of the eyeball. Let's get some details in the eyelids. And remember to always never neglect your ears, okay? And you know what, guys? One thing that always seems to be a little bit overlooked is the shadow under the lower lip. This will make your character's mouth look so much more three-dimensional. Do not forget it. And speaking of the mouth, I guess we got to do some work on this as well because it's looking a bit flat. How is that? That looks pretty good. So now we're going to flip this canvas around and do our final round of liquify. We're, we're going to just bring the eyebrows into perspective. And I'm going to rework the eyes a little bit because I think they might be slightly off. So there we go. Let's get that nice shape for the head. And before, after, before, after. So the eyes look much more expressive. And when we flip it back around, I think this also looks better. Okay, so now let's go back to the original and let's take a look at the changes we've made. So, okay, so now let's go back to the original and let's take a look at the changes we've made. So there you go, that was the original. Her face looked like it was sunken in because of the positioning of the nose and the positioning of the eyes. Now, what we've done here is we've made her face look much more three-dimensional and in the right perspective. So that's the before, that's the after, before and after, before and after. So you see the things I've done? Guys, perspective on the face when it's turned in different positions is so important in making your character look believable. Let's take a look back. First one right here, right? Picasso, normal, Picasso, normal. Now, a lot of these uncanny looking portraits are due to the positioning of the facial features not being in the right spot. So if you take a look at this one, one side of the face was way too large. And we were able to rebalance that here and add a bit more three dimensionality to the lighting. Taking a look at the third one here, this is mostly about the structure of the face where the nose needs to be pushed out, the eyes needs to be pushed back a bit, and the overall three dimensionality of the face can be brought out in this perspective. So there you go, guys, there is my attempt at fixing some of your guys' art that you put into Sam Rose B16. Not all of my changes were fixes because some of these are just personal preference, but I hope you guys have learned something new from watching this process. We always talk about these things, but I think for you guys, it's very helpful to see them in action. So with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video. Now go apply some of these techniques your pieces. Once again, thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform on which to create your website. Use Squarespace to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. And you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. You can display posts from your social profiles on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels. Go to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash samdoesart for 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more art content just like this. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh boy. Oh, oh, oh. So, did you guys like that? Let me know in the comments, which of these drawings was your guys' favorite? Not because I want to know, 
but just so you guys can comment more on this uh, video so that YouTube algorithm is like, oh, people are engaging, so it pushes it out to more people, so then I can feed my village. <laughs> uh.